my past life as a soccer coach, uh, once you win a national championship, everybody wants to come play for you. Really not true. Um, once you pay them $25,000 a year in scholarships, everybody wants to come play for you. And parents would always come to me and they'd say, okay, uh, my son or my daughter wants to come play at your university. What is it that we have to do? Um, you know, what are you looking for? And being the Socratic professor that I am, I was, well, what does your son or daughter do? What do they do really well that we'd be interested in? And typically their answers are, well, they've got great vision. They're really good. They can see the entire field. Or my daughter is the fastest player. There's nobody that can beat her. Or my son's got a great left foot or really, really great in the air and can head every ball. I'm like, yeah, not bad. But to be quite honest with you, those are the last things I'm looking for. The most important thing, self-confidence. Without that skill, and I use the word skill intentionally, without that skill, we are useless as a soccer player. Because when you lose sight or belief in yourself, we're done for. I use the definition of self-confidence to be the ability or the belief to believe in yourself to, to accomplish any task, no matter the odds, no matter the difficulty, no matter the adversity. The belief that you can accomplish it. Self-confidence. Some of you are saying, oh, great, I don't have it, I'm so shy, I'll, I'll never do good. I'm so... And you start to drag all the way down here. But I use the word skill because I believe it can be trained. And I'll show you a couple of ways in which we do. Hopefully I won't run out of time. I don't use any slides because my speech always goes here, here, or here. So we'll see which way we get to. The easiest way to build self-confidence. There's no magic button. I can't say, hey, this plane is going down. Who can fly it? Put your hand up. I can, I'm confident. <laughs> <laughs> repetition, 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 right? What does Malcolm Gladwell call it? Uh, the 10,000 hour rule? There's no magic button. I recruited a goalie from Columbia, South America one year. Uh, big, tall, six foot three man. Uh, you know, he had hands like stone. I thought he was like flipper. Every time I throw him the ball down, down onto the ground, I was like, oh my God, we're in trouble. Simple solution, get to the wall, kick a ball against the wall and catch it. Kick the ball against the wall and catch it. His goal was 350 a day for eight months. He came back, his hands were calloused, the moisture on his hands were literally gone. He is now playing in Europe. Magic, no. Repetition, repetition, repetition. The problem is we expect to be self-confident but we can't be unless the skill or the task we're doing is not novel, is not new to us. We want to be in a situation where we've created, we've had so much pressure in that, and what I mean because pressure builds diamonds, we want to be in a situation where, hey, I've done this a thousand times. I did my speech, and I practiced in front of the mirror. Da -da -da -da, da -da -da -da. Hey, I'm sounding good. And then I went in front of my kids and my, and my wife. I was like, oh gosh, I got a little nervous. And then I get in front of Glenn Gould, oh my goodness, I'm a little more nervous. By the time I get to the ACG, where 2,500 people, can't say anymore, right? 2,500 people, where 2,500 people are there, I won't have a single ounce of nervousness because of my ability to practice, right? Over and over and over again. The problem with repetition is, how many of us bail after the first bit of failure? How many of us bail after the first bit of adversity? Edison was on that video. And depends who you ask, there's anywhere from 1,000 to 10,000 tries to build that light bulb. 1,000 to 10,000. J.K. Rowling should be on that video. You know how many publishers she took her Harry Potter book to? I believe the number was 12 or 13. I don't, I'm pretty confident, but after two or three no's, I'd be like, dang it. After six or seven, I'm like, maybe not. Definitely after nine or 10, I'd be looking to be a soccer coach or something else beside an author. <laughs> right? I mean, 12 times somebody said no. But... Practice, 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 and do not accept failure. Maybe it shouldn't be repetition. Maybe the answer should be persistence because we all repeat something, but very few of us really will persist. So that's one way to build self-confidence. Get out there. Do what you want to do and accept no, do not accept no. The other one is self-talk. We all have a self-talk tape that plays in our head. Anybody go shopping and put on a pair of pants this week? If you're a woman, the first thing that always comes, damn, I look fat in these pants. And if you're a man, it's the opposite. Oh, God, I have no muscle. I'm so flabby, right? We all have this tape that plays in our head. As a student, if they asked me the question, it was like, oh, gee, please, don't, please, professor, don't pick me. I don't know the answer. I don't pick. I look down, right? If you're in a, when I, let me tell you something. And 
the VP of Business Administration here, so I shouldn't repeat this, but when they hired me as an athletic director, I sat in an architect's meeting, and I am as about as dumb as a post when it comes to anything to do with numbers and angles. And they're like, the uh, fundibulator valve of the uh, architectural, <laughs> they're, 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 uh, what do you think, uh, Dr. Joseph? Uh, let me look into that for you and get back to you. <laughs> right? I was saying, oh, God, God, don't, please don't ask me. Please don't ask me. We all have this negative self-talk that goes in our head. Guess what? There's enough people that are telling us we can't do it, that we're not good enough. Why do we want to tell ourselves that? We know for a fact that thoughts influence actions. We saw it there with the, um, with the video Sheldon, Dr. Levy showed. Right? We know that our thoughts influence actions. Why do we want to say that negative self-talk to ourselves? We need to get our own self-affirmations. Muhammad Ali, what was his self-affirmation? I am the greatest. Who else is going to tell you? There need to be quiet moments in your bedroom, quiet moments when you're brushing your teeth, that we need to reaffirm, I am the captain of my ship and the master of my fate. That is my affirmation. I came from a school of 1,000 people. I lived in a town of 1,000 people for 15 years. There's no reason that I should be in charge of an athletic department building Maple Leaf Gardens. But I am the captain of my ship and the master of my fate. If I don't say it, if I don't believe it, no one else will. How do you build self-confidence? Get away from the people who will tear you down. There's enough of that. Muhammad Ali, I am the greatest. There is no one better than me. It's a difference between hubris and ego and false pride. It's just reminding yourself in quiet, silent moments. I put it down on a list. It's right beside my mirror, right? About all the things that make me who I am. Because I make enough mistakes, and the newspapers will recognize it, and people around me will recognize it, and they'll tear me down. And pretty soon, I'll begin to believe it. There was a time when my confidence was really low. There was a time when I took this job, when I came from Iowa, I don't know if I could do it. I had to bring out my self-confidence letter, a letter I wrote to myself when I was feeling good. Ivan, congratulations on getting your PhD before 40. Congrat I am 40, under. <laughs> congratulations on winning a national championship. Good job on raising three good kids and marrying the right woman. I wrote a letter to myself it was my own brag sheet, my own letter about the things I was proud of. Because there are moments, and we'll all experience them in our career, in our life, in our job hunting, in our relationships, when we are not feeling good about who and what and where we are. And I had to bring out that letter and read it time and time again for a period of about two weeks to weather me through that storm. It was important. Stop the self-talk, the negative self-talk. If you'll watch, you'll see some athletes, they'll have a little bandage or a little um, 